This is, I am told, the worst shooting disaster in Canadian history. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 of the most evil Canadians in history. These people were animals. For this list, we're looking at some of the most despicable individuals from the Great White North who have wreaked havoc on the world in their own respective ways. Which of these entries shocks you the most? Let us know in the comments. Joseph Albert Gay. Years after getting married to his wife Rita, Joseph Albert Gay met a younger lady with whom he struck up a romantic relationship. Determined to spend the rest of his life with his newfound lover, Gay devised a plot to get his wife out of the picture. To achieve this plan, he sought the help of two accomplices, his friend Marguerite Pitre and her brother Généreux Rouet, who was a clockmaker. In 1949, Gay persuaded Rouet to build an explosive device, which he then checked into an airplane Rita was going to board. The device detonated during the flight, killing all 23 people on board, including Rita. Gay's heinous plan may have succeeded, but he was also put to death after being convicted of the crime. Russell Williams For 23 years, Russell Williams was a decorated pilot and officer of the Canadian Armed Forces, rising to the rank of colonel. Williams was the commander of Canada's largest military air base when he was arrested in February 2010 for the murder of Jessica Lloyd. Williams' arrest hit like a bombshell. He had been connected to the crime through the tire tracks found outside Lloyd's home after her disappearance. During police interrogation, Williams confessed not only to Lloyd's murder, but to multiple assaults and also breaking into women's homes to steal their underwear. Yeah, 60 pieces of theirs he would then take photographs of himself wearing these garments. At his trial, Williams faced various charges, including murder, assault, and 82 counts of breaking and entering. He is currently serving a life sentence. How do you feel about what you've done? Like what? Uh, disappointed. Elizabeth Wetlaufer. It's quite horrific that sometimes it's the ones who are supposed to care for us that end up harming us. That certainly was the case with Elizabeth Wetlaufer, who worked as a nurse in multiple healthcare facilities around Ontario. Because soon enough, she'd be working night shifts. The nurse on duty, responsible for all the medications. She was the keeper, she was the boss. During this time, Wetlaufer murdered eight elderly patients of hers and attempted to kill six others. She committed these crimes by injecting her victims with the diabetes medication insulin, which, when administered in high doses, can lead to coma and death. Most of them lived at this care center in Woodstock, Ontario. In a chilling confession to police, Wetlaufer claimed they were annoying, stubborn, and some even wanted to die. Wetlaufer also had substance use disorder, and while at a rehab facility in 2016, she confessed to her despicable actions, chalking them up to, quote, surges beyond her control. In 2017, she was convicted and handed eight consecutive life sentences. She said she was sorry, but sorry's too late, it's already done. Luca Magnata. And so I was on Facebook one day and I found a post. A lot of people have been feverishly posting about a video that was online. In 2010, multiple videos began appearing online, which portrayed acts of animal cruelty being carried out by an unidentified man. The clips caught the attention of a group of online sleuths who were able to identify the man as Luca Magnata. Soon after, another video by Magnata surfaced. Only this time, he was no longer inflicting harm on an animal, but a human being. It was no longer a game of online, this was real world. The victim in the recording was an international student from China named Jun Lin. Magnata had lured Lin to his apartment, where he murdered him and then mutilated his body on camera. Magnata fled the country afterwards, but was eventually arrested in Berlin. The investigation of the case became the subject of a highly controversial Netflix documentary. They finally caught him. And it was just like the perfect way for Luca to go down. Luca was caught in an internet cafe because he couldn't stay away from his vanity. Clifford Olson, dubbed the Beast of British Columbia, Clifford Olson was a serial killer who reigned terror on young people in the area in the early 80s. Olson claimed 11 lives in less than one year. He was finally arrested on August 12, 1981, after a failed abduction. What makes this case even more outrageous is the controversial plea deal Olson reached with the authorities. In exchange for confessing to all 11 murders and leading police to the locations of the victim's remains, Olson's wife and child received 100,000 Canadian dollars. He was eventually sentenced to life in prison before dying of cancer in 2011. 
Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. The crimes of killer couple Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka are arguably some of the most horrifying in the history of Canada. Even before meeting Homolka in October of 1987, Bernardo had committed multiple assaults, mostly in the town of Scarborough, Ontario. The damage that it did to those victims was unreal. After the couple began dating, Homolka became an accomplice to Bernardo's sadistic crimes, aiding him in the assault and murders of at least three young girls, one of whom was her own sister, Tammy. Homolka didn't lift a finger to save her sister from Bernardo. Upon their arrests, Homolka turned on Bernardo, claiming to have been forced into participating under the threat of violence. Bernardo was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment, while Homolka was found guilty of the lesser charge of manslaughter. Since then, she's kept a low profile, going by the name Leanne Thiel. Marc Lépin. To date, the École Polytechnique massacre remains one of the deadliest mass shootings in Canadian history. The ugly episode, which was perpetrated by 25-year-old Marc Lépin, occurred on December 6, 1989, and left 14 women dead and an additional 14 other people injured. Soon, news of a crazed gunman started trickling out, sending anxious families into shock. But no one knew anything for sure. Fueled by his frustrations with feminism, Lépin walked into the École Polytechnique de Montréal and specifically targeted women in the institution. He yelled at the guy that they have to leave the classroom Nine women all together in the corner of the room. He told us that uh, we were there because we were feminists. At the end of the ordeal, he took his own life. The massacre acted as a catalyst for stricter gun control laws in Canada, and its anniversary is now observed as the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. These women, respective lives and destinies, were shattered, which has left us with the obligation to reflect on this loss. Gilbert Paul Jordan. Known in the media as the boozing barber, Gilbert Paul Jordan was a Canadian serial killer who found an unconventional way to kill his victims. Instead of conventional weapons, Jordan's was alcohol. A person who misused alcohol himself, Jordan would pick up women from bars in Vancouver's downtown east side and ply them with drinks. Once they had blacked out, he would then force feed them with more alcohol until they overdosed and died. He mostly targeted indigenous women in the area and is believed to have killed at least eight women throughout his spree. Unbelievably, Jordan was only found guilty of manslaughter in one case and served just six years in prison. Inderjit Singh Rayat. Before the 9-11 attacks, the deadliest act of terrorism in the aviation industry involved Air India Flight 182. On June 23, 1985, the plane left Montreal for London, but exploded in midair, leading to the deaths of all 329 passengers and crew. There are memorials across the country to honor the victims. The sundial on Toronto's lakeshore marks the moment that changed hundreds of families' lives. A second explosive device was aimed at another flight, but it detonated earlier than expected and killed two baggage handlers. The event was masterminded by the leader of the Babur Khalsa separatist group, Talwinder Singh Parmar. Parmar persuaded a member of the group, Inderjit Singh Rayat, who was a mechanic and electrician, to build the incendiaries used. For some, Canada's worst mass murderer is considered a hero. You would think that people would have moved on from those radical thoughts from 30 years ago and we're at a new place in our history. Of all the people involved, Rayat was the only one convicted. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Robert Picton possibly one of the most prolific serial killers in Canadian history. Robert Picton was a pig farmer whose large farm became the site of his despicable crimes. In 2007, Picton was convicted of the second degree murders of six women, although he confessed to an undercover agent that his actual victim count was 49. The hours and hours of tapes and thousands of documents make up a staggering amount of evidence that until now could not be reported. It's believed that Picton's murderous spree began in the mid 80s when he inherited his family's farm. I think he acted alone most of the time, but I don't think he acted alone all of the time. Together with his brother, he hosted raves that were sometimes attended by up to 2,000 people, some of whom became his eventual victims. He actually set up the circumstances in these raves that they were having 
um, to to lure effectively a kind of steady stream of prey for him. So. In that sense, I don't know how much of it was a conscious effort on his part and how much of it was just circumstantial good fortune as far as he was concerned. After killing them, Picton reportedly gave their remains to his pigs. He was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole for 25 years.